live from Denver, this is Fox 31 News at 6. We're on it. It's an exciting day here at Red Rocks. Music is finally back. Lotus is going to be kicking this off with a big show tonight. We're going to have details on how many people will be allowed inside of this iconic amphitheater. Ghosted when trying to get a vaccine. What's up with that? Another clinic apparently shut down with little notice. The problem solvers, we're on it. New photos in the case of a stolen car and the beloved dog inside. Police asking if you recognize the possible suspects. Good to have you. Six o'clock. Thursday morning. Hope your Thursday's off to a great start. Yeah. I'm Kirk Yonke. I'm Megan O'Halloran in Newsflash. If you liked yesterday's <laughs> weather, you'll like it again today. If you didn't, same old, same old. I mean, come on, Brooks. I know. We I gotta nice blame to somebody for this. We, we need that Arizona weather, right? Get some sunshine in here, some dry breezes. All right, make it happen. Yeah, just give it a few days. Yeah, you know, we've you got talk some, the talk over there. We're, we're talking the talk. <laughs> we've got the morning fog. We've got an afternoon chance for some rain, a mix of snow, and even thunder. But high temperatures today will be a little warmer than they were yesterday. Yesterday's high was 37. We had that snow. You can see the snow on the rooftops around downtown. The roads are wet. However, with temperatures right now below freezing, it's 27 degrees. It's possible that there are some icy spots. Vax and Shaker Skycam Network looking a little foggy and indeed around the DTC, especially some locally dense fog. No advisories or anything like that, but you'll see it on your way into work coming out of the south. 16 degrees at Estes Park right now. Also tracking some snow on the northern front range up around Wellington right now. A little bit of a coating possible, but a high of 54 today, much warmer than yesterday. Still, though, nine degrees below normal coming up this weekend, though. It's all about the 70s, so we're going to get into that warmer weather. Just hang on. Okay, you promise? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Happening tonight, Red Rocks Amphitheater hosting its first large concert in more than a year. As you probably know, COVID canceled all the shows at the popular venue in Morrison last summer. Fox 31's Emily Allen joins us live from Red Rocks. Uh, not only that, this is a, a pretty big year for them, pretty big anniversary, Emily. Exactly, and so it is a very exciting time at Red Rocks, and it's nice to see that on this big anniversary year, they'll, they're able to host concerts once again, and so you can imagine a lot of people waking up this morning excited. If they have tickets to this show, that's going to be happening a little later on. Of course, things will look different inside, but I think a lot of people just rejoicing about the fact that they can finally get back to Red Rocks. Black, black, black. <laughs> Well, those are the sounds up from Lotus. They're playing tonight the first of four shows here at Red Rocks. This jam band is a familiar favorite here at Red Rocks. They were supposed to play three shows. They ended up adding a fourth show, which is happening tonight, marking the start of their concert series and the first big concert at Red Rocks since the pandemic hit. There will be changes because of COVID. The crowd is limited to 2,500 people, even though the venue can technically hold up to 9,500 people. Seats will be divided into four sections and each each section will have its own designated parking lot and entrance. The crowd is encouraged to wear masks outside. Masks are required at any indoor spaces in Red Rocks. That includes the restrooms, trading post and visitor center. Red Rock says that conditions and capacity limits can change throughout the course of the music season, all depending on regulations from the health department and the city. And so it's just asking fans and uh, music goers to just stay tuned and keep in the loop about out their concert that they're attending. Emily Allen, Fox 31. I'll just have to get the shovel and the broom out there, get all that right. snow off the uh, steps and the seats. Clear they got off some, your little section there. Exactly, they got some work to do. Thank you, Emily. 603 right now, a Boulder attorney fed up with gun violence says she's trying to change state laws. Linda Sue Smullen has spent more than $11,000 this month, just this month, purchasing two billboards, supporting gun control measures. Smullen has done this before in the wake of other mass shootings. She says she's not surprised a mass shooting happened in her hometown of Boulder and is hoping her billboards are seen by the governor and other lawmakers and spurs reform, even though she knows she has plenty of critics out there, too. There's a fair amount of thought that goes into the the impact, the punch. And for me, you know, I'll read some things and then it, I'll get that punch of like, oh, yes. And if it gets to me, I'm going to craft something along those lines. The, the more and more that that side pushes, uh, the, the gun control advocates push, uh, the more I see people out buying firearms and ammo and, again, exercising their uh, their rights for a concealed weapons permit. Um, you know, I, I think it has a, the reverse effect of what she's aiming for. 
Interesting. Smullen is also planning another billboard in Congresswoman Lauren Boebert's district on the Western Slope in the coming weeks. Donations to a GoFundMe account are also helping to fund these efforts. Confused patients showing up at an abandoned vaccine clinic in Westminster yesterday and the problem solvers quickly learning it's connected to another clinic in Adams County shut down last week for refrigeration issues. Both clinics are operated by Advanced Urgent Care. The state says it closed several of the company's sites out of an abundance of caution after discovering that they were not keeping the vaccine doses at the right temperature, at least at the Adams County site. Now, what they don't know is why Advanced Urgent Care still had appointments on the books and scheduled at the Westminster Clinic location yesterday. Some patients said they didn't even know about the cancellation until they showed up. It's a waste of an hour and a half yeah. of our time. We just got the email from them at 3.51. That's after we talked to them on the phone. And uh, we drove all the way down here for a 4 o'clock appointment. Wow. Advanced Urgent Care says it has not administered any doses at the closed site since April 14th when they were initially shut down. And they don't know when they're going to open back up either. And they're right now trying to get a hold of people whose appointments have been pushed back. Both Pfizer and Moderna say you will likely need a COVID-19 booster shot, which both companies hope to have ready by this fall. And they're hoping that the booster won't make you as sick as some people are getting after that second dose. Researchers working on those boosters trying to tweak the formula to make them a little easier to take. The hope is that by reducing the reaction, it'll also encourage people who are reluctant to get the shot to change their minds while keeping others safe. Another big reason, much like the flu, different variants of COVID are emerging and boosters could help combat those variants. The U.S. now on track to administer its 200 millionth COVID shot today. That's ahead of the 100 day vaccination goal set by the White House. And now President Biden wants to make it even easier for Americans to get vaccinated, calling on all employers to provide paid time off for workers to get their vaccines. No working American should lose a single dollar from their paycheck because they chose to fulfill their patriotic duty of getting vaccinated. Yesterday, President Biden announced a tax credit for small businesses to cover the cost of paid leave for vaccinations. John Hopkins, Johns Hopkins, showing more than 3 million people have now lost their lives to this virus with more than 143 million cases now confirmed around the world. The U.S. with nearly 32 million cases, more than double India, the closest country with more than 15 million cases. Government officials in India are threatening new lockdowns as cases continue to soar. Brazil reporting more than 4,000 new deaths just in a 24-hour span, bringing more attention to vaccine inequity around the world. New developments. A young woman has been begging for any information that could bring her dog home safely. Solo, 15-year-old Beagle Basset Hound Mix. Investigators have released these photos of suspects in the case. Well, that's, that's the owner, not the suspect. Westminster police say the pictures of the suspects were taken from a business in the area where the vehicle was stolen. If you are able to identify either of the, the male suspects in those photos, contact Westminster police. Solo was in a car that was stolen near 74th and Federal, April 16th. Her owner, Caroline Wilson, says her friends took Solo for a drive. They say they left her in the car for less than a minute when they went into the Tropical Smoothie Cafe there. When they looked outside, the car was gone and Solo was in it. Caroline spent her weekend handing out flyers with Solo's face and information, hoping the power of social media and word of mouth will help bring her dog home. NASA's Mars helicopter will make an encore performance today. It comes three days after Ingenuity made its first ever power controlled flight on the red planet. It successfully climbed 10 feet in the thin atmosphere. Today it will aim for 16 feet high, then go into a slight tilt and move sideways for seven feet before hovering in place and then back to its original base. New pictures will also cool. be sent back, even though there's going to be a little bit of a delay there. Yeah, but new pictures would be great. And, yeah. and, and Brooks, you were saying that when you, when when uh, they figure out a way, they figured out a way to make oxygen. They can do a lot with that, more yeah. than just making oxygen for people to be there. We're talking rocket fuel, right. mm -hmm. which, We're which will... We're just starting to scratch the surface it's there. It's incredible. That makes it a lot easier to get there because you can get home. You know, well, you, you can get to other planets too, right? Yeah, if you wanted to. I, I, don't I want to. I don't know if you'd want to go much past Mars. I mean, there's, I there's some gas Kirk? giants out there. But Kirk, you're not it's, that adventurous. I don't even it's, know what's out it's there. It's a cold <laughs> solar system. We need to get some kind of a warp drive before we can really do it, but that's going to take some time.
<laughs> yeah, live long and prosper, Kirk. It's going to be a long ride. Um, check it out. So this has been the snowiest winter since 1984. We've had 80.2 inches of snow. We average 56.5 inches and we're on the precipice of even breaking this. We get a little bit more snow coming up and that would bring us back to the 1982-83 season. So it's been it's been really, really snowy. Whenever I see 1984, I think of that Georgia Orwell book. Right now we've got some foggy conditions outside in what is a, a winter snowscape at the end of April. Of course, the last snow typically in April happens around the end of the month, so this is not unusual, but we've already been in the 80s. I think it was April 4th and 5th. We were at 80 and 81 degrees respectively, so it's easy to forget that that stat that this is also the second snowiest month of the year here in Denver. And visibilities are definitely reduced. Around the DTC right now, we've got some zero visibility in spots. Now, as far as the snow goes this morning, we've got a little bit of lingering snow in the northern front range back through Estes Park, enough to drop another inch of snow up in that neck of the woods. But for the most part, that activity will dissipate, actually turn to a rain snow mix this afternoon. We could also see some thunder showers developing. 27 now in Denver, 33 in La Junta, on the way to 71 in La Junta. A warmer day today. You know, the high yesterday in Denver was just 37 degrees. Typically, we're in the low 60s. 54 the high today. That's still nine degrees cooler than normal, but a lot better than yesterday. Just dodging that afternoon chance for some precipitation. But you know what? We really need it. I mean, we we're talking about this. We're still in this mega drought across the West, so any moisture is good moisture, even if it comes at an inconvenience. Just watch out this morning with temperatures still below freezing for the possibility of some icy travel on less traveled on ramps, off ramps, and overpasses until it warms up later on this morning. All right, thanks, Brooks. Only on Fox, Colorado sisters critically hurt in a bad crash driving home from volleyball practice in Monday night's snowstorm. And now their team pulling together. And before you head out the door on this Thursday morning, the three things that can help you react faster when you're behind the wheel, and they're likely three things you wouldn't think would help.
Denver. This is Fox 31 News. We're on it. Lawmakers discussing the precautions Americans should be expected to follow as air travel starts to take off again. The TSA says more than 1 million people pass through U.S. airports Tuesday, way up from last year, but still not even half of what we saw that same day two years ago. Health experts say the federal mask mandate expiring next month should be extended at least through September and airline food and beverage services should remain limited. The head of airlines for Americans says the travelers should be able to prove vaccination with a digital health certificate. The CDC says vaccinated Americans can fly safely, but it still does not recommend non-essential travel. Colorado lawmakers considering a bill to add gender identity and expression to anti-discrimination statutes. The bill comes among a wave of bills across the country aimed at curbing transgender rights. The National Center for Transgender Equality says there are 21 states with full non-discrimination protections for gender identity. This bill would make Colorado the 22nd. Several witnesses who opposed the bill spoke in front of the Senate committee this week saying it challenges their religious beliefs and rights. An update on a story we brought you yesterday morning. The Jefferson County Sheriff's Office asking for help to identify a suspect after an attempted child abduction. Scary stuff here. Happened Tuesday night about 720 at Harriman Lake Park near Quincy and Kipling. Nine-year-old says she was separated from her friend when a man approached her and said hello, grabbed her arm. The sheriff's office says the girl screamed and ran away. Exactly the right thing to do, thankfully. Investigators asking for people who live in the area to check their surveillance video for anything that looks suspicious. Two high school volleyball players in northern Colorado continue to recover after a pretty bad accident. Emily and Zoe Rollins were driving home from volleyball practice at Thompson Valley High in Loveland Monday night when their vehicle slid off of Highway 34 during that snowstorm. They both suffered very bad injuries and both remain in local hospitals. 16 year old Emily is at the Medical Center of the Rockies. 15 year old Zoe is at Children's Hospital in Aurora. They've been FaceTiming each other, checking in with each other. Um, yeah, they're very close. It's hard being in two different hospitals for, for them and for us as parents. Now, friends have set up a GoFundMe page to help out with medical costs. You can find a link to that on our website, kdvr.com. You can also check it out on the Fox 31 News app. New study finds three things can help you react. Get this, three things help you react faster when you're driving. Coffee, duh, <laughs> right? Of course coffee helps. Rap music. And believe it or not, noisy kids. All stressors. I don't, I, well, not the coffee. The coffee makes I don't know, sense, too right? Too much coffee, maybe. UK scientists tested their theory about 100 drivers. They said drivers who had a good cup of coffee could stop 78 yards earlier than uncaffeinated ones. The sound of noisy kids heightened the average driver's perception of potential hazards, likely because they were already alert or on edge, <laughs> which is accurate. The study also found that women are quicker to spot dangers on the road than men, and that rap music sped up the response time. Hmm. But uh, R&B music slowed it down, so, you know. You're too relaxed. A little boys to men might not be good in the car. You're too <laughs> relaxed. Yeah. Make sure you turn off that quiet storm. Till the end of the road. Oh my gosh, that was like Kirk's high school but, prom song. Oh, it was actually. <laughs> but here's the thing, uh, with kids, like I don't get that because for they're me, they're like kicking the back of the seat. Well, they're distracting. Don't make me turn they this car around. They turn my brain into mush, and yeah. I, I feel like I'm so like in yeah. a different. Do you feel like that, Brooks? Well, there's this uh, brain thing where like it's we're we're designed to harm. What's the word? To have a harmonization at the sound of the shrill. Or maybe noisy kids like yeah. elevate your baseline of stress so you can handle. <laughs> Worse. It's something about no. the scream and All the crying. It just it here. rattles your brain in the core. It's a, it's, I'm sure it's an evolutionary thing, so you drop everything and pay attention to them, which is important, but you don't want to drop drop your hands off the wheel when you're driving, right? So that's kind of interesting. Yeah. 32 at 8 o'clock, 49 by noon, and 54 the high today, too. It'll be warmer today than yesterday, maybe even a break of some sunshine. Yesterday's high was 37, but this afternoon, a chance for some rain showers, even a thunder shower can't be ruled out. Right now, though, it looks like a winter landscape. And look at that. That is just, here we are, April. April 22nd. We got some foggy conditions. This looks this looks like January. Well, the roads are wet out there, but there could be some spots because temperatures right now are below freezing. It's a little bit icy, so just a heads up there. 
visibility reduced. Fog is another part of the weather story today, especially down toward the DTC. We've had zero visibility, but 27 degrees, you know, because of that strong April sun angle we've been talking about for the last couple of days, the, the roads are generally speaking just plain old wet, but of course, elevated areas, once you get above, say like uh, just above the surface, bridges, overpasses, you get into the lower 20s for temperatures or the teens. I mean, there will be some slippery spots, especially up toward Estes Park, so be careful this morning. Morning foggy areas, afternoon rain and snow mix, and even some thunder possible. Free Fox are doing pinpoint weather app, always a great tool to have when the weather turns foul like this, and we've got it happening right now. Across the northern front range, some snow showers, Fort Collins to Granby, enough to drop a coating to an extra inch, and we've got several inches more today in the forecast for the mountains, but yeah, once you get up toward Wellington, heading up to Wyoming, you're not only seeing the snow in your headlights, but it is it definitely an off highway producing some snow covered areas on highway roads there just appear to be wet as far as the latest CDOT cams go, but we can see some thunder showers in the region as soon as four o'clock this afternoon. Chance for rain today is running about 40%, so not all of us getting in on that precipitation, but certainly a chance for it. And if it comes down hard enough, it may mix with a little bit of snow or a little bit of gravel. A couple of thunder showers for the day tomorrow, but look at these temperatures warming up. Yesterday's high again, 37 today, 54, 57 tomorrow, up to 76, 76 degrees on Sunday, 74 on Monday. I mean, these weekend temperatures, the weekend as a whole will be absolutely spectacular, guys, but we've got two more snow chances to follow, one next week and then one, a more significant one the week after. All right, thank you, Brooks. Mm -hmm. Celebrating Earth Day and taking care of our planet. Local students learning how ladybugs are actually helping out. Be on the lookout for emails or texts about winning prizes from Costco. Multiple scams making their way across the internet right now. I'm ready. All right, I need to bring that script up, sorry. I guess I wasn't ready. Here we go, in three, two, one. 43 new criminal charges for the man accused of the Boulder grocery store shooting where 10 people were killed. 32 new attempted murder charges were added, 10 large capacity magazine related charges and one count of assault. The suspect expected back in court May 25th. The district attorney giving an update on those charges this morning at 10 o'clock.
from Denver. This is Fox 31 News. We're on it. 624 here on your Thursday morning. Today, students at Riverstone Education Preschool out in Lone Tree will celebrate Earth Day and taking care of our planet by releasing 10,000 ladybugs back into the environment. Students will also be dressed for the occasion wearing red and black clothing oh, and cute. antennae, antennas. I don't know how you say that. Antennas. Antennas. Right? I think so. The students have been learning that ladybugs serve as a natural pesticide by feeding on insects that could otherwise harm the health of gardens, trees, and shrubs. And and a sign of good luck. Who doesn't love ladybugs? Yeah, right? they're it cute. It is a sign of good luck. And with today being Earth Day, President Biden will announce plans to cut America's greenhouse gas emissions in half by the year 2030, which isn't that long away, nine years away. The formal announcement expected later this morning at a virtual climate summit. Forty world leaders will be participating in that summit. Cities far from the coast have emerged as uh, job seekers and businesses during the coronavirus pandemic. This is according to an estimate from the Wall Street Journal. Colorado's capital benefited from a lower cost of living and an influx of tech and finance jobs. Other top cities, Salt Lake City, Austin and Indianapolis. Costco warning customers about 13 online scams. The uh, company posted 13 screenshots of prominent fraudulent emails, texts and posts. The Costco says they're currently circulating the internet. Most of them are offering freebies like products, gift cards, other exclusive offers worth 50 bucks or so. Many of them also require the customer to take a short survey in order to redeem these prizes. I, I love that because it's Costco, it's not one scam, it's 13 scams. You gotta, you gotta get the 13 pack, even when it comes to scams. <laughs> just heads up, Everything comes in bulk. Everything comes in bulk right. at Costco. A four day old cult worth thousands of dollars stolen overnight now the family asking for any information on where it may be our weather forecast featuring morning fog followed by afternoon scattered showers a wintry mix even a thunder shower have i missed any weather condition that isn't happening today we've got just about everything on the plate today 54 the high temperature coming up we'll talk about warmer days ahead some sunshine followed by more snow
live from Denver. This is Fox 31 News at 6.30. We're on it. And I'm struggling with this incident on multiple levels. A one-on-one -on -one interview with the Boulder Police Chief. Her thoughts following the King Supers mass shooting. Dangerous drugs hitting the streets of Colorado. The Fox 31 Problem Solvers exclusive look at how many people in Denver are dying from an overdose of something they didn't even know they were taking in the first place. A whole lot to get to 6.30 here on your Thursday morning. Bundle up. It's going to be another cold one out there. Thanks for joining us. I'm Megan O'Halloran. And I'm Kirk Yankee. And it even looks cold in case, mm -hmm. in case you were wondering. I mean, it's, it's, there's some fog hanging out today, bro. There's some snow obviously right. still on the ground. Guys, you said it's Thursday, January what right now? I know. Right? It feels like it. Yeah, the morning foggy area is giving way to some sunshine, but then a chance for some thunder this afternoon and a wintry mix. It's one of those days where every kind of weather you can imagine will happen. We had the fog, break of sunshine, a little bit of rain, a little bit of snow, a little bit of thunder. Right now, downtown, it, it looks like the middle of wintertime. It's the end of April, 29 degrees outside, light west flow, Baxton Shaker Skycam Network. Visibilities have been reduced, you know, at the DTC earlier this morning morning just south of downtown Denver. It was zero visibility, so there were a couple of tough spots. 25 at Fort Morgan, 22 Lyman. Possibility of bridges and overpasses a little bit slippery this morning. We've got some snow falling across the northern front range back through Grand County, a coating to an inch possible in those locations. But for the most part today, we're going to see that snow wrapping up late this morning, transitioning to a chance for rain, thunder, a little bit of a mix. 54 the high today, considerably warmer than yesterday's 37, but still nine degrees below the normal. Coming up though, 70s and nearly 80 degrees on the way for this weekend. I'll lay it out for you. Thank you, Brooks. Boulder Police Chief Maris Herald is opening up about the community support following the Boulder King Supers mass shooting. Fox 31 invited to sit down with her for an exclusive interview. This is the first opportunity that I think that I've had to focus in on how important the community support since March 22nd has been to me, uh, the police department, um, all of the victims at King Supers. I have never in my 29 years of policing, um, and I have seen a lot of bad things in my career and a lot of critical incidents in my career. I have never seen such an outpouring of support. She says the support is coming from Boulder, Denver, the surrounding areas, the country, internationally even. She said she stopped counting after about 1,000 letters, and that was just specifically to the chief's office. Happening today, the district attorney's office will provide an update at 10 o'clock this morning about the King Supers grocery store tragedy in Boulder. And a slew of new charges have been filed against the man accused of shooting and killing 10 people last month. Fox 31's Jim Holy live in Boulder this morning to break it all down for us. Jim, good morning. Megan, good morning. You have 43 additional new charges being filed against the alleged shooter as of this morning. Now we're out in front of the, the King Supers here in South Boulder. You can see the memorial wall is still here. The shooting happening here in Boulder exactly one month ago today. Here's what's happening. Here's the latest on the investigation. Now, initially, the alleged shooter was slapped with 10 counts of first degree murder and one count of attempted first degree murder. That was for shooting at one of the responding officers on that day. And now comes the additional 43 charges. The district attorney is now beginning to get ballistics information. They're beginning to get information from the crime scene in terms of the number of rounds that were fired, who fired, which rounds. And so beyond the original 11 charges, the alleged shooter now faces 32 additional attempted first degree murder charges, 10 large capacity magazine charges, and one count of first degree assault. The defendant is due back in court on May 25th. That will be for a status hearing at that time. And the Boulder County District Attorney, Michael Doherty, is going to be holding uh, an event later on today. Uh, it's coming up this morning. He's going to be talking about the new charges and will give us the very latest on the case as well. That's happening at 10 o'clock this morning here in Boulder. Live in Boulder this morning at the Kings, I'm Jim Hooley, and Fox 31. Still those, those, those pieces of mementos, mm. if you will, hanging there on the fence. I know they've taken a lot of them out there, Jim, but there's still a pretty significant showing of support out there, isn't there? It's incredible. It goes all the way wow. down the street, Kirk. Mm. An incredible sight still one month later. Gosh, just a visual representation of the support that's coming in for that community. Thank you, Jim. 635, the state of Colorado setting a grim record for overdose deaths in a single year. Fox 31's Drew Engelbart joining us live from the newsroom with more on how you can get more information to protect 
your loved ones. Uh, pretty serious stuff. We're talking about fentanyl overdoses. Yeah, and important information here as well, because in 2020, more people died from overdosing here in Denver than from car crashes and homicides combined. Fentanyl responsible for more than a third of those deaths. So here's a look at some of those grim statistics. More than 1,200 people died from overdose statewide, and you see here in Denver more than 300. That's nearly double the amount of the deaths from car crashes and homicides combined. One of the leading causes of those overdoses, the arrival of fentanyl. It's a dangerous drug being disguised as a basic prescription pill. At the Denver Medical Examiner's Office, Dr. James Caruso is finding manufactured fentanyl in more bodies than ever before. The people who are buying these drugs on the street, they have no idea what they're getting. So coming up later today, we're going to continue this conversation on our digital platform, Fox 31 Now, how people can protect their loved ones. You can watch at 2 o'clock on the Fox 31 app. It's going to have more information like at Denver's Harm Reduction Action Center. They're actually handing out fentanyl test strips, which can alert drug users if their product has been laced with that dangerous drug. And right now, there's actually a standing Narcan prescription. That's an overdose reversal drug for the city and county of Denver, meaning Anyone can pick it up at a pharmacy at any time. And again, more information coming up on Fox 31 now at 2 o'clock this afternoon, guys. Which is, I mean, that, and that's a good thing for people to know yep. just in case. I mean, that, you may think you never need it, yep. but yeah. or someone you know never needs it. But uh, gosh, if, if you're in that situation, it'd be good to know that. Thank you, Drew. You got it. 636 right now. We've got brand new details coming out about a deadly police shooting in North Carolina. A deputy has been placed on leave after he shot and killed 40-year-old Andrew Brown Jr. while serving a search warrant in the town of Elizabeth City. Witnesses say Brown got into his car and tried to drive away when he was shot. There are reports multiple shots were fired. Authorities say the deputy was wearing a body camera. No word on what the warrant was for. 100 demonstrators gathering at the scene to protest the shooting. Funeral services will be held today for Dante Wright. He's the 20-year-old black man who was shot and killed by a police officer during a traffic stop in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, not too far from Minneapolis. The former officer who shot him said she mistakenly used her gun instead of her taser. Kim Potter, she resigned days after the shooting and now faces second degree manslaughter charges. The Minnesota Department of Corrections releasing this brand new booking photo of Derek Chauvin after the former Minneapolis police officer was found guilty in the murder of George Floyd. He's scheduled to be sentenced in eight weeks. The Minneapolis Police Department now facing a civil investigation in the wake of that verdict. The Department of Justice was already investigating whether the officers involved in Floyd's death violated his civil rights. Now it will look at the entire department to see if there is a pattern of unconstitutional or unlawful policing. And making news from the state capitol this morning, a bill that will help people leaving the prison system get a state-issued ID now heads to the governor's desk. Officials say having a state-issued ID is an essential tool for a successful re-entry into communities. It's estimated the bill will ensure 100% of prisoners will leave with an ID by the year 2022. A family in Weld County pleading for help right now after they say someone stole a four-day-old gypsy car Holt from their farm just north of Fort Lupton. It's taken sometime between 1045 at night on Tuesday and 830 in the morning on Wednesday. We searched everywhere and then we found some baby hoof prints right outside the gate and somebody's footprints and tracks that kind of back right up to here. So we're thinking somebody snagged him. The Weld County Sheriff's Office thinks that she may be right. Detectives were on the farm yesterday afternoon in the snow, casting footprints as evidence. He's hard to miss. Obviously, if you've seen this little guy like this around or know anything about what may have happened, call police. We've got that number for you over on KDVR.com and the Fox 31 app. The cult is worth an estimated $12,000. A cold, snowy day at Coors Field as oh, the Rockies man. look to sweep the Houston Astros. The Astros and the Rockies uh, would be tied at two apiece in the bottom of the second before the Rocks tacked on two more runs. The Rockies now adding a, a few more to win this one, 6-3 to three over Houston, despite the cold and snowy weather in Colorado. Certainly uh, work to our advantage you there. You know, in a month and a half from now, you'll be urged to bring, you know, a bucket of sunscreen with you to uh, Coors Field. That's Colorado for I mean, you, right? Gotten, Always keeping you on your toes. I've gotten seriously burnt at Coors Field, <laughs> sitting in the stands there. And then you've got people with blankets, Brooks, all cuddled up, trying to stay warm at a baseball Goodness. game. Who would have thought? That's right, I know.
Oh, gotta love it. I mean, look at this shot. This looks like the middle of February or something. Here yeah. we are almost in May. Well, April is our second snowiest month of the year. Easy to forget when we have these beautiful spring days between snowstorms. Live view from the Bags and Shanker Skycam Network. 28 degrees right now. Could be some icy spots. Roads were wet this morning. Conceivable they could ice up here before we edge to temperatures above freezing. Now let's talk about how much snow we've had. We had a little over two and a half inches of snow officially last night at DIA. Normally, or on average, we see about 56 and a half inches of snow. For this season, we've had 80.2 inches. Huge snowfall totals. Our, our previous snowiest winter, you got to go back to 1983, 1984, when we had almost 81 inches. And so we're not done with winter yet here, even though it's officially springtime, there's more snow in the forecast. I'm pretty confident we're going to at least get to levels that are resembling 1982, 1983 winter, where there was just a little bit more snow than that. So this is getting back there like uh, 37, 38 years back there. Five miles visibility in Denver right now. It's reduced though, highly localized, definitely dense heads up there. Also looking at some snow falling in the northern sections of the front range from Wellington to Fort Collins. Certainly we could see a coating to an inch or so falling out of this stuff. But for the most part, the snow is going to move out of the region. It's going to turn to a rain threat and even a thunderstorm threat. That's in the plains, but in the mountains, the snow chances continuing 28 in Denver right now. We're going to see a high 54 today, 71 in La Junta today. Temperatures much warmer than yesterday's high, just 37, but still nine degrees below the normal. We've got every kind of weather you could picture here on the seven day forecast. Coming up, we're going to talk about highs pushing 80 this weekend, followed by another chance for snow. Thank you, Brooke. 641 of Time Saver Traffic Update. Starting today, RTD customers used, uh, used to using the park and ride at the Broadway Marketplace will need to park elsewhere or face a ticket towing. RTD decided not to renew its license for those parking spots. They're still parking nearby at the I-25 Broadway station. So heads up, we don't want you to get a ticket. I don't want you to get towed. That's a bummer for mm -hmm. anybody. Local students learning to fly drones, but it's not just for fun.
live from Denver. This is Fox 31 News. We're on it. So it's been six months since the East Troublesome Fire burned through parts of Grand County in northern Colorado, destroying sadly hundreds of structures and homes <sighs> and beautiful landscape in its path. That video is tough to watch still a year later. Now we are starting to see some signs of growth, though, as yeah. residents and community members alike are rebuilding what was lost. Fox 31's Kevin Torres, he's on it. All new this morning, joining us live from Denver Kevin. with a closer look at the progress being made. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, guys, and good morning, everyone. You know, it really is impressive given how it's only been a half a year since the fire. As you recall, it started on October 14th, but it took about six weeks to contain. During that time, though, it became the second largest wildfire in Colorado history. Now, overall, officials say 371 homes were destroyed by the blaze, including an additional 100 to 200 other structures, such as barns and sheds. But the mayor of Grand Lake tells me over the last six months, there's been plenty of progress. So far, he says, about 120 projects properties have been cleared or a little less than a third. The popular Sea Lazy U Ranch near Granby was among them and actually held a grand reopening ceremony this month. It lost several structures in the wildfire and the mayor of Grand Lake, well, he says neighboring communities, they plan to come together next month for a big old countywide cleanup. So adopt a family on May 8th is putting together volunteer crews to do any type of cleanup, whether it is just debris cleanup or whether it is more foundational and there's there's pieces of home and and other debris but we're working diligently to really get everything clean so that the work can begin this spring Recent bouts of wintry weather have prevented many property owners from beginning the cleanup process, but they're hoping that'll change in the coming weeks. In terms of lessons learned from the East Troublesome Fire, the mayor of Grand Lake says communities across Grand County learned a lot, so much so they're changing the way that they look at wildfires. And we're gonna dive deeper into that coming up next half hour, all about around 7.15 this morning, guys. Back to you. All right, Kevin, you know, it's these, these, these places, these beautiful places in Colorado, they're treasures, right? Most of us go there in the summer and visit, and uh, it's so important that they, they build things back and we get help them get back to where they need to be. Thanks, Kevin. Well, speaking of local yep, firefighters, absolutely. they're training for a hot and dry summer ahead. A quarter of the Denver Fire Department's crew members trained in wildfire response. So kind of expanding uh, their efforts here. Yesterday, they were given an annual refresher course. This year, the department is uh, training 58 new people to be deployed if needed. They've also purchased about $15,000 worth of new gear for firefighters called in to assist. But the department says the metro area will always be its priority. Fox 31's Amy Lewis, she tells us more about how often metro firefighters are expected to be deployed to wildfires this year. Hmm. She has a, a digital exclusive story. You can catch that on our website right now, kdvr.com. Lots of good content, lots of good stories over on our website in the Fox 31 mobile app. And your weather forecast is always there yes. as well, too. Brooks helping to uh, keep right. that updated throughout the day. And wow, Look. today, just one of those days. Look at this. Is it going to clear up at all? You know, I think we're going to catch some breaks of sunshine midday, but we're dealing with kind of like a low clouds fall kind of situation and then that partial clearing will lead to a chance for a couple of thunder showers this afternoon mixed with a little bit of snow potentially oh by the way look at this look at this traffic on i-25 north uh, just check the cdot website they've got a couple of left lanes closed i'm not sure why it must be an accident or something up the road so heads up i-25 north there looks like some problems uh, weather wise today you know we're going to warm things up to about 45 by 11 and 54 by 3 which is still nine degrees colder than normal but definitely a lot warmer than yesterday's high of 37 degrees average highs in the low 60s looking at a couple of thunder showers a possibility this afternoon just another sign of spring and and this this is spring in Colorado, isn't it? Look at this. The snow. It looks like it's January something, not April something. Certainly not almost May. Visibilities still lower than five miles in many locations up and down I-25. In fact, the DTC earlier had zero visibility. 30 in Sterling right now, 22 in Lyman, 25 degrees at Copper Mountain. Some morning fog, some afternoon sunny breaks, afternoon rain and snow mix and thunder. Have I left any modes of weather out of this? Uh, 
No, I think we're pretty good. Yep, that's everything. Um, <laughs> the Pinpoint Weather app, great tool to have in springtime when Mother Nature literally dishes out everything inside of one day. With well, this storm system coming through the region, and by the way, this weekend, you know, I left out the heat. We're going to warm things up. It'll be pushing 80 degrees by this weekend, so truly every type of weather. This morning, looking at some snow showers on the north side. Once you get up toward Fort Collins, Wellington, coming down at a pretty good clip here in Fort Collins, by the way. Possible that those roads are getting a little bit snow covered. We could see a coating to an inch or so. This stuff is sagging south, but for the most part, it's going to start to move out of the region. Here's Futurecast. Notice how it kind of dissipates as it moves south, and in doing so, kind of turning over a little bit of rain as well. And that's where we could see our focus point for a couple of thunder showers. So not a huge chance for precip today overall. It's not going to be an all-day rain, but certainly that possibility, especially this afternoon. 57 tomorrow with a couple more thunder showers. Then look at this weekend, Saturday, Sunday, even into Monday, beautiful conditions. Mid 60s Saturday, mid and upper 70s on Sunday, and then Tuesday and Wednesday, of course, is a chance for some rain and snow. Guys, I don't know about you, but this is so Colorado. Beautiful. Perfect. Thank you, Brooke. It is. It's so <laughs> typical Colorado. 650 right now. We just got new unemployment numbers. U.S. jobless claims dropped to 547,000. That is a new post-pandemic low as layoffs ease up with the economy improving. And students are learning to fly drones at the Boeing Blue Sky Aviation and Gallery at Centennial Airport. The goal here, not just to fly for fun, but to compete in the newly formed United States Drone Soccer League. Can you believe that's a cool. thing? Now, the students uh, could not have a better teacher either. He's the program manager at the Exploration of Flight Center, so totally in his wheelhouse there. He's also a uh, United States Air Force retired major who flew combat missions in Iraq and Afghanistan. The game itself plays a lot like Quidditch. You have drones on each team, and one of them is the striker. If they get through the goal, they score. Everyone else is trying to collide and prevent them from scoring. So it is a full contact sport. I love it. Yeah, no it. kidding. Well, Major Sanders says his passion is inspiring future astronauts, and this is the perfect way to get them involved. And as soon as he said it's a lot like Quidditch, you know, like hundreds of Harry Potter fans said, what? <laughs> a lot like that Quidditch. Got their 